Community Forum is sponsored by the Easton Grange 196 and a friend of Yardley Wood Rink and the Easton Lions Club. There's a storm across the valley The clouds are rolling in The afternoon is heavy on your shoulders There's a truck out on the four lane A mile or more away The whining of his wheel just makes it colder. Welcome to Community Forum. Today is January 10th, 2024. Happy New Year, everybody. May this be a wonderful year of good health and happiness and uh, moments, many moments of joy in your lives. And today, welcome to my series, Introduction to Easton's Corrigan. So today I have the uh, great pleasure of welcoming to the show uh, Reverend Doug Falls, who has had, had a very interesting uh, background and been on many journeys, and I hope that you will enjoy his recitation of those journeys today. So welcome, Doug. Thank you for having me today. Well, Reverend Doug, yes. So or Doug. <laughs> tell us a little bit about your background, where you grew up, and what were some of the... Um, things that led you to the ministry? Sure. Uh, I'm from around here. I grew up, I was born in Norwood, raised in Westwood, and uh, went to school on the North Shore at Gordon College, uh, Christian College up there, uh, many years ago. And um, I became a newspaper reporter and a sports writer after that. And um, I never had any inkling that I, I for, the, for the ministry to be a, a pastor, but um, my life changed and took a new direction. I, I found a church that really nurtured me and uh, I grew in my faith and I um, had this deep desire to, to serve God. So I um, hope that any helped. factors that influenced that? I would just say uh, the gospel itself. Uh, I, I wanted to be a missionary. Uh, that was the start of my career, so to speak. Uh, and in the Bible, Jesus gives the Great Commission. He says, go, go into all the earth and, and make disciples and teach people about me and uh, baptize believers. And so I wanted to go share the love of God with other people in other places. So that's what I did. You did that, and but before, did you go to seminary before that? So, that's a good question. <laughs> yes, I did. I went to uh, Gordon Conwell Theological Seminary, um, and I was there for about um, part of my education, just for about a year. Uh, I, I didn't always do things by the book, as all, all pastors did. I was, uh, but I was ordained by my church before I had completed my uh, seminary education. And after I came back from Brazil, where we went for five years, um, my wife and I, uh, I finished my Master of Divinity at Regent College. It's a seminary in Vancouver, British Columbia. Mm -hmm. So when you were in Brazil, did you learn the language? Yep, we learned how to speak Portuguese and uh, it was uh, definitely a challenge, but uh, uh, I love the language. It's beautiful. And uh, fortunately, coming back here, we have a lot of people who speak Portuguese around here, as you know. Yeah, so you can, you have many opportunities to practice. Yes. Yeah. Lots of Brazilians, lots of people from Portugal and, and the yeah. islands. Yeah. So when you come back, um, and where did this script, the script writing and so forth, how many years did you devote to that before you started this new journey? Uh, About 10 years. I was, I was a writer and a sports editor. Uh, it seems so long ago, and it's such a kind of a defunct 
career profession now, <laughs> the way things have changed. Mm -hmm. uh, the electronic <coughs> media has taken over. And so, but I did that until about 1991, 1992. And then you were off to Brazil, and um, I, be I understand your wife lived. Yes. And did you have children at that time? My wife and I had children in Brazil. Oh. Uh, we had three. Uh, we have two daughters, but our very first child, we lost our child. Oh, uh, so sorry. My wife uh, lost our child in utero, and uh, so that was a, a huge experience for us. Yeah, uh, of course. Um, obviously very painful and sad. At the same time, um, finding that uh, God really uh, spoke to us and grew us in that whole experience and mm -hmm. connected us as people. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> have you? So you have a special connection with the death of a child, and I'm sure that in your ministry, you have come across opportunities to be able to soothe and comfort people in that regard. Yes, and I think that was one of the experiences which led to me eventually becoming a chaplain, which is what I did for the, uh, most of my career after we came back from Brazil. And uh, being a chaplain is um, uh, having compassion for people one-on-one -on -one or in small groups usually in a specialized setting like a hospital. Mm -hmm. And so um, I think that was one of those signature uh, experiences I had. So I assume your daughters are grown? My daughters mm -hmm. are grown. One's 27 and one is uh, 24. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're doing well. Great. And have, <clears throat> has either one of them decided to go into ministry? Uh, no, but the younger one, uh, we came back to the States when um, one of them was about two and a half and the other mm -hmm. one was only six months. And the younger one, who's now 24, lives in California. She loves her heritage, a Brazilian heritage, and she goes back to Brazil. Really? And she's learned the language that she didn't learn there because she was too young. So um, uh, she's doing well, and I could see her someday doing that. So the delayed reaction gene might be in her? Could be. <laughs> I'm praying. <laughs> yeah. So <clears throat> tell me, what are you busy with these days? So these days, uh, I retired. I'm 65. I retired uh, a couple years ago from the VA in uh, the Boston, VA Boston Healthcare System, which has uh, hospitals, in, as you know, in Brockton and in mm -hmm. West Roxbury and Jamaica Plain. I worked at them all as a full time staff chaplain for many years. And I retired, and um, like everybody else, retirement is <laughs> a crapshoot. You have to learn how to do it. And so uh, I've been doing <clears throat> things that I like to do. Um, I, two years ago, I was hiking the Appalachian Trail, and uh, I hiked a half of that. And uh, I'm going to section hike the rest. I've uh, done some jobs. I worked at REI selling outdoor equipment. Uh, I'd never sold anything in retail before. So retirement's a time to experiment and try different experiences. And, mm -hmm. But I've also felt um, uh, a call, I feel, to uh, become a pastor, mm -hmm. uh, an interim pastor of churches, uh, perhaps. And so that's something I'm pursuing right now. Yeah, so you uh, fill in for the gaps where between calling a new pastor, correct? Right. When the old and one leaves and then they're trying to get a new one, and so you fill in as the interim. An interim pastor has become somewhat <coughs> of a specialty um, uh, because when churches lo lose a pastor, whether they le leave to go get a, have another job or they retire or they die or whatever happens, uh, there's... There's a time when they, you need somebody to be there for a while before the, the next permanent person comes in. So that's kind of what I'm looking at right now. Um, but uh, I'm not really sure. You know, most people uh, become start their pastoral careers when they're in their 
30s or something like that. I, I waited until I was 65. I, <laughs> I do things upside down sometimes. It's more fun that way. Sure. <laughs> Um, and um, so, so you have had many experiences, and therefore you have created um, many avenues to help people. Well, um, mm. it's I think it's a lot about just being yourself, and uh, mm. it's uh, a lot of people think about you know you have to have skills and you have to have programs and you have to do this and do that, but. Uh, it's real life is just about being yourself and helping people, you know, mm -hmm. and um, that's what people relate to, I think. Yes, of course. Um, and you have been a resident in Easton for qu quite a number of years. It will be 15 years mm -hmm. uh, in July. Okay, yeah. and you're residing in Southeastern? In Southeastern, okay. yeah. And um, so you have been a part of this community for a while, and uh, what are the what are the sorts of uh, events or places in the town or what's going on in town that you're especially attracted to? My wife and I like to go over, over to Borderland a lot and take walks there. We took a walk there the other day when it snowed. We had that big storm on Sunday. We were out there tromping through the snow with another couple and a dog that likes to play in the snow. And so that's one of our favorite places. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, it's a wonderful asset that we have. Uh, in our yeah. teeth, another one, open space. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and thanks to the Ames family and the Shovel Works, um, we have many, many open spaces that, yes. they, that they owned and, uh, had, and were ne have never been developed. So I don't know if you know, but 38% of the land mass in Easton is uh, in conservation. 38%. Yes. I don't think most towns can boast that. That's pretty good. Yeah. So you've, you've enjoyed becoming an Easternite. I have uh, another thing, if I can mention it. Um, I'm trying to remember specifically <coughs> what they call it. The Eastern Chamber Music Festival. Yes. Michael Korn is the Michael conductor. Korn. Yes. He's a good friend of mine. Yeah. He's a wonderful musician. Uh, he, he plays among... His most, the yeah. one I think is wonderful, he, he's a virtuoso with the violin. Absolutely. He taught my daughter violin too. Uh, he, he was one of my <coughs> daughter's mentors in that. Really? Yeah. And yeah. It, it, yeah. He's just amazing. And so we need to plug the three day uh, festival, Eastern Chamber uh, Music Festival in June. Uh, and, um, my wife has been coordinated, has been <coughs> the coordinator for that, my wife Luann, uh, for the last uh, seven years. Really? And I've been helping her. I'm, 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 I do the, the grunt work. I see. <laughs> now, you're also filling in for uh, a pastor who's ill, uh, somebody who's uh, taking a sabbatical or um, has other issues why they cannot be available on Sunday. Well, I haven't done that. Uh, I, I'm open to doing that. I'd like to do that. Um, um, but uh, it's uh, occasionally I have uh, preached, and um, I, I'm also on the Eastern Clergy um, Eastern Clergy Alliance. Group. Alliance is that what they call it now? Mm -hmm. I just uh, I had been on it uh, many years ago, and I just rejoined it mm -hmm. recently. So. Um, Kind of trying to make connections with people in town. Yes, right. So <clears throat> you bring a, a, a very interesting and varied history, but an important one, I think, because you have, can really understand people from different as, different uh, walks of life, um, you know. And your experience in Brazil must have taught you a lot of things. Can you enumerate on that a little bit? What did you learn um, from that experience? I know you mentioned that the people are wonderful and uh, warm and loving people, um, but there must be other things that you gained from that experience. Oh, many things. Um, I think um, I think I gained an appreciation for Brazilians. I'll say that, um, and I always have a love in my heart for them. Uh, because they were very hospitable to me and my family. And uh, I think God put that love there, uh, personally. And uh, uh, so um, 
I, I take that away and we come back there to Massachusetts and there's lots of Brazilians. I, I think they're everywhere anyway. They're, <laughs> they've settled all over the world, so it's a wonderful mm -hmm. thing. And, and we meet them and we just feel like family with them. So. Sure. And then there's the uh, very large, significant Cape Verdean population right in Brockton. Yes. yes. And some of them are here in Easton. Uh, so you have a lot of opportunities to uh, keep your Brazilian language from getting rusty. Well, yeah, when we came back from Brazil, we li and lived in Canada. I, I finished my Master of Divinity in uh, Regent College, and then we came back here, and we lived in Fall River for a while, where there's a lot of Azorean uh, folks from the Azores. Yes. A totally different kind of Portuguese, by the way. And really? Very okay. difficult, and I was, a, I was a hospice chaplain there uh, for uh, a few years, and it was... Um, it's like another, it's another culture and really another language. Mm -hmm. And But I was able to kind of adjust to that. And then, you know, so each culture has its own flavor. I think that's a, a big thing that both my wife and I are really um, uh, big on is uh, uh, mm -hmm. the, the cultures of the God is uh, placed in our world. My wife is a teach, by the way, she's an ESL teacher oh. at Bridgewater <laughs> State. So she works with internationals every day. Sure. So um, you, you probably got the travel bug, too. Oh, Big love time. traveling. <laughs> it, it, it costs, though. It's, it's, it's not cheap. That's so right. It costs money. And <laughs> but yeah, uh, we travel anywhere, anytime, mm. sure. Well, if, you have, uh, if you've done your DNA and you have discovered relatives in a certain country, that's the best part because you can, you know, stay with them and they'd be really love to show you their country and their customs and so forth. I go to Sweden almost every other year and I see my family and um, I have a cousin who owns a car rental agency. That came in handy. <laughs> wow, good connections. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. But anyway, um, it's been wonderful to talk to you and uh, thank you for becoming such a a good and passionate uh, member of our Eastern community. And I'm sure that our viewers will probably spot you in a pulpit someday. And uh, we wish you all the very best. Thank you for all the service that you've performed in Brazil, in Canada, in the United States, and now in Easton. Thank you for having me, Priscilla. You're very welcome. And thank you for watching. This is Priscilla Almquist Olson. All the best. Until we meet again, be well. Community Forum is sponsored by the Easton Grange 196 and a friend of Yardley Wood Rink and the Easton Lions Club.